Welcome folks, for those of you joining us. We'll get started in just a couple of minutes, but I wanted to give um, anybody arriving just a little bit late or whose internet is lagging a minute to get started. Or a minute before we get started, pardon. Hello and welcome to those of you just signing in. We're going to give it about uh, two more minutes or so before we get started, just to make sure everybody has a chance to fully get logged in. Ah. All right, there we go. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for coming to tonight's information session about ACES High School in Muckleteo School District. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and just so you know, if you miss anything or your internet does drop out, we are recording the session. It'll be posted on the district's YouTube as well as our home uh, webpage, and so you can access this at any time. All right. So. Because first and foremost, the question I get asked most often is the principal at ACES High School, by the way, hi, I'm Blake. I'll introduce myself a little bit more in just a minute, is what is ACES High School? The ACES High School is a choice school in the Muckleteo School District that students can choose to attend as opposed to a Kamiak or Mariner. Uh, it's teeny tiny itty bitty. We're going to talk a lot more about that in just a minute, but it's got anywhere, depending on time of year, between 140 up to 200 students. And it's also a much more personalized environment than most high schools you're going to find uh, in the state of Washington. So here today, uh, we have a couple of folks. Um, looks like Ting hasn't made it just yet, um, but I have here with me Julie Hills. She is our family engagement liaison. Um, I'm gonna ask her to introduce herself and share just a little bit, a bit about who she is, what she does, and then chime in periodically throughout the presentation. Hello, I'm Julie. I'm the family liaison at ACES and my job is to kind of do anything and everything it takes to help families get and stay engaged in their kids' education. We have an excellent support staff at ACES. Uh, so sometimes people get directly what they need and they don't necessarily go through me, but if someone needs help accessing school services or district services or knowing what's available, I try to help make sure that there's good communication between the school and families and families in the school. I help parents use Parent Square and other tools to stay connected to their students' learning. And um, I'm pretty much just happy to answer the phone and help you get answers to any questions that you have. Thanks, Julie. Uh, if Ting arrives later, and he might be having some internet issues, I'll pause what we're doing and have him introduce himself. Uh, hi, I'm Blake Baird. I am the principal at ACES High School. Uh, I've been the principal of alternative high schools for just about to finish my eighth year and was a teacher at alternative high schools or choice schools before then. Uh, so this is very much my, my world, my bread and butter, my area of passion. Um, a couple of things before we really dive in. Uh, one, um, you'll note uh, attendees that you are stuck in the attendee box uh, as this is a webinar rather than being recorded because I don't want to put anybody on on camera and audio and all of that that gets a little awkward for folks um, as well as just to keep things flowing at the end of tonight's presentation uh, we will have a chance for question and answer uh, you'll note at the bottom of your screen or potentially at the top depending on your zoom settings you've got a Q&A button if you push that you can enter in questions that will come to myself and Julie um, and then we will go through and answer those questions all at the end, but feel free to enter them as we're going through the presentation so you don't forget them just in case you hold on to it for too long. All right, let's get again. 
So other questions I get pretty regularly, what is the school like? What, what really describes ACES? Like I said, it's teeny tiny. There are anywhere from 140 to, we're capped at 200 students roughly uh, at the school. And that has some serious pros and some drawbacks to it. Uh, as a pro, uh, if you come to ACES, there's not that many students. So you're gonna know just about everybody and just about everybody is gonna know you. Something amazing happens in your life. You're gonna have a group of people that know you, that care about you, that have that close relationship, who can support you, who can celebrate with you, uh, who can, I don't know, go out to dinner with you uh, to celebrate that new job you just got. Uh, if something really awful happens in your life, you you know failed that algebra test that you were really counting on, um, you're gonna have a group of people that know you, care about you and can support you uh, during a time of trouble. There's also uh, some drawbacks with being in such a small school with so few students. Uh, namely, you will know everyone and everyone will know you. Um, for the most part, it's not a problem, but there's always that person that we don't particularly care for. And at a school like a Mariner or a Kamiak where they've got 2000 plus students, you can kind of just avoid the folks that you don't really care to spend your time with. But at somewhere like ACES that is so teeny tiny, you're kind of with almost everybody almost all day. There's not a different hallway to walk through. We have one hallway. There's not a different class to take uh, to avoid that person you don't care for. Or maybe you start dating a classmate and then break up. Um, it can really stink to be in class all day with your ex from there on out. That said, I would argue that that opportunity is actually a really great and safe space to learn how to navigate occupying spaces with those we have conflict with, because, well, it's kind of an important life skill and school is a safe place to do that. Uh, in addition to being so small in terms of our students, we're teeny tiny in terms of teachers. We have three general education teachers, or 13, not three, wow, 13 <laughs> gen ed teachers and one special ed teacher. Uh, the pros here is if you come to ACES, particularly those of you who might be incoming freshmen considering coming to ACES, other than you know folks who move and get a different job or whatever, you're gonna have the same set of teachers all four years through high school. Not the exact same set necessarily, but if there's only two math teachers, well, then you're going to have at least one for at least two years, if not three or even all four, depending. Um, and as a result of having such a small staff, you get to know everybody, everybody gets to know you, and you can develop really close working relationships with your teachers, and they can get to develop really intimate knowledge of you as a student, how you learn best, how you demonstrate your learning best, how they can best support you, um, and really develop a pretty solid relationship to move your education forward. Um, However, uh, there's only a handful of teachers. If you are that student who just, for whatever reason, your biology teacher rubs you the wrong way, uh, you really don't care for them, well, they're the only one we've got. <laughs> and you need that class to graduate. Um, we'll support you in figuring out how to navigate that, but there's not the opportunity to switch to a different teacher's class uh, if you're having uh, a challenge with a teacher. The other piece that Julie alluded to a moment ago, and I'll ask her to speak about this a little bit more, is our support staff. Our support staff is as large as our teaching staff, and they are a phenomenal group of folks. Julie, do you mind talking a little bit about them for a second? Yeah, so we have um, we have counselors who help our students pick classes and make sure that they're getting all of their graduation requirements. And the counselors can also work with our students to help them make sure that they are really in the educational fit that works best for them. Whether that remains ACEs, that's great. We love to keep you at ACEs and we love to keep you going and graduate you from ACEs. If along the way, what you need to finish your education turns out to be a different program, um, we our counselors can help you access those programs and talk through what your different options are and make sure that you are your students are finishing in the way that fits best with them and their timeline. We also have a mental health therapist um, who's contracted from an outside agency, but who's on staff, I believe, three days a week and can see students uh, on our campus. And we have paraeducators pushing into classrooms, supporting our students with IEPs. Um, we have a student support advocate, just like at the bigger schools, who's helping our families with outside resources that they might need to be stable and provide a stable environment for their kids to learn. Um, and we also have a fantastic college and career counselor and high school and beyond coordinator who um, goes above and beyond as well, like many of our other staff, to get to know the students and um, really help them find the right path as they go through ACEs. So a very large and caring staff of folks. And I'm noticing a typo on my part. There's a second mental health 
uh, item on there that should have read our security guy. His name is Joel. Um, and yes, he absolutely is, is our campus security, but he is also an incredible support for kids, uh, particularly folks who are having a, a tough day or really struggling to figure out how they're going to navigate a particular class or a relationship. Um, he's rock solid there. And while I didn't put him on here because, well, custodians don't typically interact with students that much in most schools, our custodian, our day custodian, Joel, he's been at the school since its inception. He is a phenomenal human being. Um, and is also just another person to support kids. And in a school so small, everybody knows everybody. Um, every member of our staff is there to support our kids. So those of you who are, are considering coming to ACES or want to learn a little bit more, um, hopefully you are aware of the concept of high school credits that you need to graduate. <laughs> you need 24 in the state of Washington right now. Uh, and for next year's graduating class, the class of 2024, many of the waivers that have been in place since COVID began are going away. So you've got to earn as many credits as possible. And at ACES, we have five main pathways to earning credit. First one is your traditional coursework. You go to class, you do the work, you turn in the work, you prove to the teacher you learned the stuff, you ask for help when you need it, and you finish the semester, you get a half credit, finish the year, you get a full credit. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Most of you watching this video or watching the webinar have probably been doing this for years. So I'm not going to belabor the point too much. We also have credit retrieval using an online system called Plato, the philosopher, not the modeling play. Um, and it's an online tool for classes that you have taken in the past, but not passed them. You, you failed the class and you've got to go back and make up that credit. Uh, the perk of this program is it's largely on your own and self-paced. If you go in, you complete the lessons, you complete the assignments, you do the quizzes, you do the final exam, you can earn the credit at really whatever rate you can get through the course. Um, it is possible to sit down and bust out a year-long course in like a month. I mean, not necessarily realistic to pull that off. You basically have to say goodbye to your social life for that month and put in a ton of hours, uh, but you can. The disadvantage of credit retrieval is that you go at your own pace. And so instead of doing a year long class in a month, you can also accomplish a month's worth of class in a full year if you don't necessarily put in the time to, to get it done. We do have some periods built into our day that are Plato classes. Uh, so it's a, a set time and space to work on your independent study Plato classes. Um, but uh, it is largely self driven, though our teachers are there to help. If you get stuck on something, ask for help and you will absolutely get it. The third pathway, it's competency credit. It's using the same program, and it's also for classes you haven't passed yet, but it's kind of the, the quick way to do it. If you actually learned the material, but you didn't pass the class, something happened and you missed a bunch of school right at the end and never took the final. Um, you had just a really off day, uh, or you did everything, you learned it all, but you were in a space in your life where you just like were not able to, to handle tests very well. That's fine. If you can log on to Plato and complete uh, the final exam and earn an 80% or better, um, you can just be done with the class because you've proven you've known it. Now these tests are proctored. They're not something you can do on your own time or at home. Um, the, the assignments for the credit retrieval version, yes, but for competency, you've got to take the, the final exam uh, in a proctored setting. Um, and right now up to one, sub, or one credit per subject area can be earned through that competency crediting. We also have worksite learning. Uh, for those of you that have a job or that get a job, we can give you credit for that. That's actually true at all high schools in the Muckleteo School District. That's not ACES specific, um, but it's something that we advertise pretty heavily. Um, there's some paperwork involved. You gotta get that paperwork filled out and turned in before we can give you any of the credit. Um, but we can definitely double dip so you're earning cash and credit for your job. Um, quick caveat on that, those credits are specifically around career and tech education or elective. Um, you can't necessarily earn social studies credit for your job at Starbucks, as awesome as that would be. Uh, but you need a significant number of elective and CTE credits to graduate, and this is a great way to get them out, uh, get them taken care of. And fifth is world language. If you are someone who is fluent in a language other than English, in reading, writing, speaking, and listening, you can take what's called a world language competency exam and earn as many as four years worth of world language credit if you do well on the test in a single test. Um, in addition to earning the credits, you also get a seal of biliteracy on your diploma from the state of Washington that basically says, hey, this kid is fluent in at least two languages. You probably ought to hire them immediately. 
Um, this is also something that is available at all three or four high schools in the in the district. That is not an ACES specific thing, um, but again, it's something we advertise pretty heavily. Other thing that happens pretty regularly, just to be perfectly blunt about it, we are a choice high school, uh, often referred to as an alternative high school, and those schools have some stigma around them. And so I want to address that completely right off the bat by answering the question I get very most often. So what kind of kid goes to ACES? It's a choice school, so they're choosing to, to leave Mariner, leave Kamiak, come to ACES. What kind of kid goes there? Who does well? It's a great question. We get all sorts of kids. Um, I often joke that our mascot should be the platypus because we kind of look like a random collection of assorted parts, yet we work really well um, because our kids are so wildly different from one another. But what our kids have in common is that they're kids who have, uh, they've lived some life typically. Um, and for one reason or another, being in a crowd of 2,400 students um, isn't the best fit. Um, and that's not true for all of our kids, but for the, the majority. Um, and what they need is just that little bit smaller, a little more personalized, a little more individualized plan uh, of space to just kind of be. They also do well uh, if they have some level of independence and are able to ask for help. Our teachers are amazing, wonderful people, uh, and they are stretched pretty thin. And part of the reason for that is that every student's learning plan is very individualized, kid by kid by kid by kid. And as a result of that, the help and the support they're giving is very individualized, kid by kid by kid by kid, rather than, hey, I know everybody is working on this thing right now, so I will provide this piece of support that'll apply to 80% you know, of the class. And so if you ask for help, you will get it in spades. The teachers at ACES are some of the most caring human beings, the most willing to put in whatever it takes to help their students I've ever known. However, if you don't ask for help and you need it, it's very easy to kind of fall into the background and start to feel really overwhelmed and like you're not getting the support you need. Not because the teachers don't care and aren't providing the help. They're there, they care, they're doing everything they can. But if they don't know you need help or know what help you need because everything is so individualized, you're not gonna get as much as you might get somewhere else. Whereas like a Kamiak or a Mariner, everybody in a given class is basically doing the same thing every day. And so you can coast a little bit better than you can at ACEs. It's smaller, it's more personalized, it's more hands-on, but it does require a level of self-advocacy and independence that may not be required at the other schools. Students that don't do very well at ACEs, well, anybody who doesn't want to be there is not going to do very well because of the level of, of self-driving required. Um, the other group of kids that don't do well at ACES are kids that don't show up. Um, a lot of places regard the choice school as kind of a, the magic fix for a student who's not necessarily been doing as well as they'd like elsewhere. And ACES is a wonderful place. It can often feel pretty darn magical, but it's not a, a fix for anything. It's just a different model and a different way of approaching supporting kids that can really support kids that don't do well in a large school. Julie, anything to that point that I uh, have missed? No, I think you covered it pretty well. Yeah, um, it's it's a place where if for kids who are ready to come and to ask for help and to um, participate in that level, then they're able to get what they need. Um, if if attendance is a major issue starting out, then you might have questions about whether it, attendance would improve at ACEs, because if it didn't, then we're not able to fix those things. But yeah, so I think I think you covered it. I will also say if anybody is kind of wondering, like, OK, so maybe ACEs isn't the right fit, but I'm not really doing great at Mariner or KMAG either. Give me a call. Um, schedule a meeting with me. I'm pretty well connected with a lot of the other programs in our area. And in fact, also the principal of next year's online program um, and can help make some connections if you need. Come on, computer. I will say that ACES also is a place where perhaps, um, you know, I don't want to say that past performance is indicative of, in some ways, past performance is indicative of future success. <laughs> Uh, but in other ways, I would say if you have a student for whom the parts of them um, that really can engage and shine aren't able to come out in other environments, then yes, you might have a student for whom maybe attendance was an issue and then ACE is a place where that is a place where that's not an issue anymore. So thinking through whether your child really shines when they're able to make some personal relationships as well and would come out of their shell or would be able to engage in a different way um, in a little smaller environment. Yeah. 
Yeah, we do have a lot of students that come to us uh, credit deficient who, for whatever reason, haven't passed a number of classes historically and then do very well at ACEs when the reason they weren't doing very well was connected to being just in the huge school or not having the, the individualization they needed. Um, it's not as great an intervention for uh, somebody who hasn't attended school in two or three years. Um, though it can be, which is why I'm happy to meet with any kid who applies um, to really get to know them personally and try and determine is it the best fit. A uh, question in the chat uh, really quickly before I talk about what it takes to succeed. Um, question is asking, hey, does ACES test for an IEP or does my student have to come with an IEP already on file? We have a special education teacher. We have a school psych. Uh, we are obligated by state and federal law to provide services as we're able, as well as to do testing. So if we have concerns about a need for an IEP, yeah, we can absolutely initiate that process and do the testing through ACES. That is no problem at all. All right, what does it take to succeed? Uh, students have to lead their own learning. There is, again, quite a bit of independence for students, um, though freshmen are going to have a freshman specific class called freshman focus, where part of what they learn will be how to lead their own learning and how to ACEs successfully, uh, because we recognize um, folks coming in ninth grade may not yet have been taught how or know how to lead their own learning and some support there might be needed. So we're, we're definitely providing that intervention. Um, Asking for help, I've talked about that a lot. I'll keep talking about it throughout this interview as well as as long as I know your child should they come to ACEs. Um, it's something that we don't do a great job as a society at um, and we need to get better at it because goodness gracious, we all need it. And then also keeping it kind. Uh, we have students who come to ACEs for as many reasons as there are students. As, as much as Julie and I have tried to boil it down in this webinar, there's really myriad reasons to come to ACEs and sometimes they're just needing a space that feels kind. And so it's essential that you are a kind space to those around you coming to ACEs um, so we can keep this place running well. Again, with it being so small, um, one person's kindness can have an enormous impact on the whole school. And one person's poor behavior can have an enormous impact on the whole school in a way that it might not necessarily be quite so felt in a larger, more diffuse environment. What about the fun stuff? Clubs, sports, selectives. I can answer all of those for you. Clubs. We have a club at ACES. It's called Club. It's kind of a catch-all. It's on Wednesdays from 2 to 4 currently. Uh, presently, transportation is provided from, for students at the end of club, which ends at 4 o'clock, to get home. Um, and really, it is whatever the group of students want it to be. Uh, often, they are playing basketball. Uh, they've done a couple of cooking classes. Um, they've watched some films. Um, it really shifts from week to week based on who's going to be attending. Uh, if you're having a very specific club that you want, uh, an anime club or Japanese club, um, you may be able to pull off forming a club at ACES if you can get a, a teacher advisor and get the club approved through ASB. But with only a hundred and some odd students, um, it's really tough to have a whole bunch of student-driven clubs. Uh, there's just not enough kids, really. You are able to access clubs at Mariner and Kamiak, um, if you, provided you can get there. That's the, the potential sticking point. Um, but if you have a club at your home school that you want to be part of and you meet all the eligibility requirements to participate in club, good behavior, good grades, all of that, yeah, you can absolutely participate in those clubs. The same goes for sports. We don't presently have any sports at ACES. Again, the student body is just too small to form a team. Uh, but all ACES students have the same rights to sports as any uh, Muckleteo School District student has. Electives. Uh, this one's a bit of a mixed answer. Uh, you can't really access the classes at Mariner and at Kamiak for their electives because, well, you're at ACES taking classes at ACES. <laughs> we don't currently have dual enrollment as an option. Um, however, we do have electives at ACES. Um, we have our this year we have theater, uh, we're gonna have cooking, psychology, environmental science, forensics. Um, some of those also fit into the CTE bucket, but we do only have next year 13 general education teachers, which means that we can't offer the same variety or plethora of electives as another school might offer. Um, so just be aware that yes, we have electives, 
But really our focus and our goal is to make sure you get your graduation requirements, get you graduated and launched into a happy, healthy trajectory towards being 30 and thriving, um, much more so than having a massive staff. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, anonymous attendee, do the students get six classes a day, the same as Mariner and Kamiak? No, we have more. Um, presently, we have eight classes at a time that students have access to for a potential of up to eight credits a year just through that first pathway of going to regular classes. Um, the schedule is a little bit wonky. Monday through Thursday is periods one through seven, and period eight is or period eight takes place on Friday, along with a little bit more of period three. Um, it will all make sense and, and flows pretty well once you get into the groove of things, but just at the outset, it is a little bit odd. It's to make the schedule work within the bells. Um, and so that eighth period on Friday is quite long, but we start at 7.30 and we end at two, Monday through Thursday, and we start at 7.30 and end at 11.50 on Fridays. Band, we do not currently have band as a class. Um, we do have a group of students who play in a band during club and often during lunch. We've got uh, in one of our portables uh, a full setup with a drum kit, several guitars, uh, I believe a piano. Uh, but it is not a class at this time. We simply don't have the number of students to, to have a band at this time. Great question. Click that button, click that button, click that button. Uh, we don't presently have ASL. We actually don't have a world language option at this time uh, beyond the testing, uh, though that is being explored uh, for future. Uh, sports in PE. Uh, we're going to have a couple of different PE options. Uh, we're going to have a team sports. We're going to have a uh, walking fitness. We may uh, continue to have a weightlifting class uh, next year. If not, we certainly will the next, the following year. Um, the question about how to make an appointment to see me, we're going to get there in just a little bit right at the end, so I'm going to come back to that question. Um, you also may have heard uh, that ACES is going through some changes. Um, we are a wonderful place that does a great job for kids, and we could do better. And so there are three primary changes that will be happening uh, next year. Um, that we are going to need your help with if you come to ACES. The first one is we're working really hard to increase our family involvement. Um, a, in just being involved in the school as a general, but also in helping steer, okay, so what are we going to do next year? What are we going to do the year after that? How are we going to continue to get better to meet the needs of the kids that, well, their needs haven't necessarily been met as well as they could have been. Um, we're also going to be a laboratory of learning with staff uh, and students engaging in some new ways of teaching and learning. Um, not like super new in the world, but certainly new to uh, ACEs. And as teachers are experimenting with project-based learning or competency-based grading, um, it's gonna be a little bit of an experiment. Uh, we're gonna have some solid training for staff to make sure that they're doing it well, but it's also a little clunky because learning anything new is always a little clunky, but you're gonna learn a lot, you're gonna have fun. And also student voice. Um, we've done a pretty good job this year getting more of our students involved in helping kind of guide and steer the school. Those of you that may have attended Monday night's board meeting saw our newest uh, student director at that board meeting. Um, but we want and we need more. So how do I get in? Great question. Uh, there's an application. That's step one. It has three parts. There's an interview. That's step two. It has three parts. And then there's getting your schedule built, which has only one part. That's the easy celebratory part. Uh, and this is uh, right now one of the easier ways to get in to see me because, well, if you apply, that automatically generates a, an interview. Um, however, I will say that if you just wanted to ask some questions, at the very end of this, I'll pop my contact information into the chat uh, as well as type it up on the screen. So you will have access to that. Uh, if you just wanted a quick phone call to, to ask a question really specific to your kid. Um, so let's talk about the application specifically. Where do you find that? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to, you can still see my screen here with the school's website. Go to uh, muckleteoschools.org, go to our schools, drop down, click ACES and Muckleteo Virtual Academy. 
Within here, you're gonna navigate over to students and families. And then as we scroll down, you'll see there's a button for application to enroll. When you click that button, page will load. My internet's doing much faster now than it was this morning, thank goodness. And there's an enrollment process that's described. It's a little bit outdated. I wouldn't get too caught up in it if you watched this webinar. We've cut, we're covering almost all of it here uh, and it's more accurate. But over here on the right-hand side, you'll see there are three links. You've got a student application, students in the audience. This is for you to fill out a family application and a counselor or staff recommendation. We can technically move forward without the counselor or staff recommendation, but it takes longer to get an interview without it. And the interviews are not as effective. And I wanna make sure that I have as much information about how to best support you or your child, should you be a parent watching this, as possible. And that school lens is critical. But if you go to the student application, You'll see here, it'll collect your email address. Those of you that are you know, taking notes at home, it's right there, though again, I will post it in a minute. Ask you about what year you graduate, what's your student ID number, if you have one. If you're not currently in Muckleteo, you may not have one. You can just answer that in there. And there's seven quest pages of questions, which seems like it's a really long application. When it's all said and done and prints out, it's not very long at all. The pages are all about this long. Once we have the parent application and the student application both, and ideally the staff application, uh, at that point, you'll get a call from Karen Wheeler. She is our phenomenal registrar, absolutely adore her. And she will call to schedule uh, intake interviews. Uh, and during that interview, it's got three parts. Part one, uh, my and whoever else is on the interview team, Julie is almost always there. It's a chance for us to get to know you. Who are you? What makes you tick? What brings you joy? What do you love in life? What things do you um, need to thrive in school? What are your goals? What are the quirks about you that we should know as staff that want to support you? Those kinds of things. Part two, talk a little bit more about the school specific to you and who you are and kind of where you're at in your process to try and make sure that three, is this the right fit for you? If so, great. Let's get you signed up, or at least recommended for enrollment. Uh, verify that we've got a spot for you. Um, this year, our sophomore class did get completely full uh, right around third quarter. Um, so that is something that could theoretically happen, though, since right now we're still in the schedule building phase, it shouldn't be a problem right now since we build a schedule to accommodate the kids. Um, and they get you signed up. If the school is not a good fit for you, Either you don't want to come, and let me tell you, if you do not want to come, you are not accepted to the school because, again, with a level of independence, you've got to want to be there to thrive. Um, or for some other reason, it's just not going to be a good fit. I've been doing alternative education in this area for quite a while, pretty well connected with other programs, and can help steer you towards something that might be a better fit. And then the scheduling part. This is the celebratory part. If we get to scheduling, it means we've got space for you. Uh, you're accepted, you're planning to come, we get you signed up, signed off, you're committing to come. And then uh, at this stage of the game, what would happen is our counselors will work on building a schedule for all students uh, late this spring and then again in August. In August, you'll get a letter from us saying like, hey, welcome back if you're a returning student or welcome if you're a new student. Our orientation is, it'll be the day before school starts, when you show up to orientation, you'll get your finalized schedule. Uh, we'll do a little overview of kind of the, the rules and how to of ACEs, as well as introductions of staff and a tour. And then school will start the next day and we go from there. It's a pretty smooth process. Doesn't usually take very long. Um, so you just get you going and get you signed up. That is everything I have pre-prepared. Julie, is there anything else I should have covered before I open it up to our audience for questions? Uh, no, but I am just curious um, who we have represented here. I'm not sure. Do folks have a way of letting us know what grades their students are in as they're listening in? Um, folks, you could certainly submit that into the Q&A box, and then that would populate for Julie and I without necessarily... Um... Yeah, we'd love to just have an idea of where your kids are at in their education, and then if you have any specific questions, we'd love to answer them. And I am going to take a minute while people are populating the chat or the, the Q&A to include my email address and phone number here. Um, I'm actually gonna put the front office phone number. I'm gonna be out of town for a little bit, like right after this webinar. Um, and I wanna make sure that you get a hold of somebody who can help you if you were to call. 
you know, Friday. Uh, but my email address is Baird, B-N, at muckle, helps if I spell it right, to.wednet.edu. And our front office number is 425-366-3910. And that is the best way to get a hold of somebody very quickly. And if I am at the school, they'll just patch it through to me. All right, questions. Um, We've got a question about transportation. It's an excellent so, question. Transportation, yes. Yeah, so transportation, you have you do have transportation to ACES. How it does work is that in the morning there is a bus that leaves from students take buses to um, the the bigger high schools to Mariner and to Kamiak, and then there is a bus that leaves from each of those schools to come to ACES. So the morning commute is a little, can be a little bit longer for students who are. Um, farther away and then in the afternoon students get on buses and they go direct the buses go directly to home they don't have to route through the big schools like feel free to add to that if there's some nuances to it but I mean the one nuance and caveat is to have access to transportation you've got to be in the district boundaries if you're an out of district kiddo the district won't come get you necessarily um, and you've got to be at least two miles from the school at the at the high school level um, otherwise you're considered a walker um but otherwise, Julie nailed it. Um, ninth grade students or, or ninth grade to be students. Excellent question. I should have addressed this earlier. Um, I applied, submitted everything, but haven't gotten a call yet to have an interview. Should I be worried? No, not at all. For our incoming freshman class, we're wanting to be very careful to make sure that we do this right, since this is our first time in the 36 years the school has existed having freshmen. Um, and so what we're doing is waiting until we get uh, as many applications as we're likely to get uh, between now and uh, early mid-June. We're going to go through all of them and then schedule the interviews kind of all together, uh, not all at once in the same room, but so that all of the freshmen that are, are being interviewed are kind of being interviewed within the same relatively short period of time. Um, again, to make sure that we're shaping our program as closely to, to ideal as we can get. So if you are an incoming ninth grader, you're probably not going to be getting a call until June 12th or 13th is when those calls should start going out. Um, and they should uh, hopefully all be scheduled uh, by the 15th, 16th for those that have already been submitted. If you're somebody who's still on the fence and you end up submitting an application on June 20th, don't worry about that. That's fine. Um, the, it's not a deadline per se. Uh, though the possibility does exist of us getting full. Um, if we get full, which again, for to everyone's surprise happened with our sophomores this year, um, then at that point, we'd have to put you on a wait list. But I'm not anticipating that likely to happen at this stage of the game. Does ACEs offer running start? Why, yes, we do. Um, any of those kind of co-educational, that's a, weird way to phrase that. Any of those programs where students typically attend their home school plus something else, Running Start, Snow Isle, um, have had a, a handful of students uh, go to some other uh, institutes as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. We have students that do Running Start. We have students that do Snow Isle. Uh, we have students that are transitioning to Grad Alliance. We have some students that uh, take a break to do Washington Youth Challenge Academy. Um, any of those our kids can access. When does the and school will, year start? Oh, go ahead. I was say, I will add also, maybe you mentioned this earlier, but also our five pathways to credit. Those are, many of those are also available at the big high schools as well. And sometimes people just don't know that the option exists. So Plato is available at Mariner and Kamiak. Um, the foreign language credit is available. The work credit, those are all available. Should you be at one of the bigger comprehensive schools, those are also options for your students to do, and you can ask your counselors about them. Those are district programs. They're not specific to ACES. Yes. Um, let's see. When does the school year start? Excellent question. We don't know yet. Uh, this is a bargaining year, which means that the teachers union and the district are kind of hashing out, okay, let's update the contract. What are some of the key things that need to be in there? And one of the things in that contract is the first day of school. And because active bargaining is still going on, we don't have a solid date. There is a calendar posted uh, on the school board's website, um, but that is a tentative start date. Probably not going to change, but don't know for sure. It's usually in that first week right after Labor Day. Memorial May, Labor Day. Yes, I got it right this time. Um, it'll be sometime right around there. 
Um, is there a cap on student registration? Yes. Um, as a whole school, we are capped at 200. Uh, and then in terms of a cap for uh, particular grade levels, that ends up shifting throughout the year simply because right now our master schedule is still in draft mode. Were we to suddenly get a massive flood of applicants of kids who are going to be seniors next year and get almost nobody who's going to be a sophomore next year, I would tweak the master schedule to make sure we can serve as many of those kids as possible. Once the school year starts is when many of those caps get locked in, because then at that point, well, we've already begun the classes. Uh, so to our anonymous attendee out there, total enrollment, absolutely. By grade level, there will be, but not yet. Any other questions? Oh, I like this question. Um, so because I think there's a lot of richness here. I like all the questions, but there's there's some depth here. Um, what if my son doesn't want to attend ACES, but it's his only option, option to graduate? Will that affect him being accepted before giving it a chance? Yes. If a student says, I don't want to go there, they cannot come to ACES. However, um, I would argue that it is probably not his only chance or option to graduate. I'm also happy to meet with, with you and your kiddo if you have a kiddo who doesn't want to come to ACES and talk about what ACES looks like. There's a lot of misconceptions about there about what ACES is and isn't. Happy to do a tour of the school, talk to some folks around, see what's going on, get a feel for it, um, as well as to look at, okay, so what other options are there? I have had a number of students uh, throughout my, my time working in choice schools where they've shown up, come to their interview and said, I don't want to go here, but it's my only shot to graduate. So I guess I gotta. So yes, I want to. And then once we unpack that a little bit, discover other pathways that they do have available to them that are better fits or determine that, okay, yeah, no, ACE is not what I ideally want, but I'm willing to do it because this is my only shot. I've also had a number of students. I actually can think of one um, when I was giving my my speech at graduation last year uh, at the school that I was at for for seven years prior. Um, the student that made me start sobbing in the middle of giving the graduation speech was a kiddo who, when I first met him when he was a freshman, um, had some things to say to me about me as a person and our program. He wanted nothing to do with it. Um, and parents were pretty devastated. Um, and then about a year later, he was like, fine, I'll, I'll go to that school. And then very quickly became, uh, very much the, the emblematic, uh, face of the school to anybody who would come tour or check out the place, uh, warm, welcoming, Hey, I got to tell you about how great this place is. I used to think it was awful, but holy cow. Um, so that also happens from time to time when a student doesn't want to come, they change their mind down the road. Yes, so I'll just second that anyone who thinks they don't want to come is welcome to, even if they say there's no chance, they're welcome to come interview. They're welcome to come tour. They're welcome to come check it out so that if they still don't want to come, they've made a considered decision and they're yep. not just basing it off of what they have heard or what they think about ACEs. Give it another full minute of wait time just in case. Oh, there's another one. Do students bring their own meals? Sure, if they want to. We also provide lunch. Uh, this year, every other Wednesday has been a food truck. Um, today, I think, was nachos and hamburgers were the, the two main options. So there's always a yogurt option. There's usually a salad option. Um, again, smaller school, maybe not as, as robust a menu as elsewhere, because otherwise we'd be throwing out a ton of food. Um, but we do have a, a hot lunch program. We also have breakfast that we serve uh, daily. Presently, it's between second and third periods, so the kids have a chance to wake up a little bit, uh, get their their guts going, um, and get some food. 
No, there is no fee for application. There's no, no cost to all. apply. There's no cost to interview. So just time. Yeah. What does an average day at ACES High School look like? Julie, do you want to start this one? Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's a really good energy. One of my favorite things about ACES is that, um, um, and when I'm on meetings with some of my other family engagement liaisons, they always say, I want to be at ACES because you guys get the fun music. Um, we have music between classes to let kids know when it's um, a, a minute toward class. Um, a, an average day looks similar in structure to the other high schools. Kids come in, they head to their classes, they hang out with each other between classes. Um, so it's similar in structure, but I would say it has a more casual feel to it just because of the size. Um, you're, and when kids need to get to class, because we're actually a smaller campus, you're not having to go a half mile from one end of the building to the other in five minutes. So you have a little more leisure time to chat with your friends or um, you know, come by and stop in the office or talk to somebody. Yeah, feel free to, to add more, Blake, about what a typical day looks like. Yeah, and then from a more, I guess, technical perspective, um, you walk in the front door, there's usually a group of at least five staff there to greet you and welcome you to the building every day. Um, a minute before classes begin, music plays. We've got a different song during each passing period uh, as to what that is. Go to class, classes are 50 minutes long. Uh, first and second period happen, then there's a presently, uh, and this might tweak a little bit next year, but the general structure will remain the same. Then there's a 10 minute break, uh, which is that chance for kids to have their normal passing, but also to go pick up a quick breakfast, uh, which they can then um, either nom on real quick, uh, or if they need to take it with them to third period, uh, provided it's not um, an activity where it would be dangerous to be eating like a chemistry lab or something, um, they can take that with them. After uh, third period is our focus class. It's a little bit shorter than the other classes because it happens again on Friday. So over the course of the week, it ends up being equivalent. Um, and this is a class that really focuses on kind of some how to human stuff and some how to student stuff, um, as well as some just get stuff done stuff. Uh, it's really our kind of all around general education class. Uh, it's also where we do most of our uh, school-wide uh, implementation things we need to do, high school and beyond planning, that kind of thing. Uh, and then you've got periods four or five, then a half hour for lunch, period six, seven, and then the day is over, and that's Monday through Thursday. And then Friday, you've got uh, not quite fully three hours worth of period eight, uh, followed by lunch, and then a little bit of focus to wrap up the day and send you off for the week, and then take off at 11.50. Uh, in terms of within those classes, again, because it's so individualized kid by kid, it can look really different kid by kid. I hope that answers your question. I'm not almost attendee. Restart my one minute countdown. Any other questions? We also have fledgling social media accounts this year beginning to share a little bit of what life is like at ACES. So if you want to see some things that students do during class, if you want to get connected and stay connected just to kind of have another glimpse into life at ACES, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, we don't post frequently, but there are some photos there just of kind of the vibe of ACES and a chance to see what some projects students have done and our really amazing Renaissance Night that we did recently. Um, those are all available on social media, and you can find the links on our web page. Uh, yes, students are provided laptops the same uh, as any other student in the district. Uh, the school day ends uh, Monday through Thursday at 2 o'clock. It begins at 7.30 in the morning. Friday still begins at 7.30, ends at 11.50. We're just about out of time. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate your time and attention. Uh, thanks for thinking about ACES for your kiddo. I hope to hear from you soon. Um, again, my email and the best contact number for the school are on uh, the screen. They're also on the website. If you forget them, don't write them down, can't find the YouTube video, just go to the school website, it's all there. Um, happy to take any questions uh, that you should have. And also feel free to call and ask your question at two in the morning. If you think of it at two in the morning, you're not going to wake us up. We don't work there. Just leave a voicemail. We'll get back to you. Um, 
We do work there. We just don't live there. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> we, do, we do work there. We don't live there. Thank you, Julie. We don't sleep there for sure. Uh, have a marvelous night, everybody. And I will talk to you soon.